the walls of Judah had been torn down and destroyed. And Nehemiah fasted and prayed. And the Bible says he wept. Nehemiah, God gave him a burden. He wept before God. He fasted and he prayed. And he asked God, he says, God, what should I do? So he went to the king. And it came from serving to understanding his purpose to God giving him favor. How many know what I'm talking about? So many times we ask ourselves, what is our purpose? Purpose is practical. It's practical. You know, you have theoretical, which is just written, theory, and you have practical. When you look at what purpose is, purpose is practical. It is an action word. How many know purpose is an action word? You cannot fulfill purpose by standing still. How many know what I'm talking about? You cannot fulfill purpose by standing still. It's an action word. In order to find your purpose, you must position yourself to serve. Oh, you didn't get that. In order to find your purpose, you must position. How do you position yourself? You come into the house of God and just serve. Nehemiah positioned himself to serve the king. And in doing so, God showed him his purpose. His brothers came with men from Judah and told him about the broken walls of Judah. How many know each one of us has a purpose? And God has called us to be servants in his kingdom and to build broken lives. You know, one of the things that we're passionate about, my wife and I, Outside of everything else, we love God's people. Jesus told Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Then feed my sheep. Then feed my sheep. Like Pastor said, it's not that I like to talk. I just like to encourage people. (laughs) Every uh, to me, I look for the opportunity to encourage people. How many know what I'm talking about? And, and you know what? And, and, and I'm gonna share something with you. We go. God knows my wife and I. We go looking, and God said, "Yeah, yeah. You see that couple over there? Yeah, this is what they're going through. I want you to go. go you guys go minister to them. So we go to them and we talk to them. We encourage them, and we hug them. We pray for them. And lo and behold. They start opening up and sharing things they're going through. And we're like, we know. Well, how do you know? The, Lord, the Holy Spirit told us. When we position ourselves to go in the body of Christ and serve, we're not looking to be leaders. You're not looking to the, for titles and everything else. If you want to impact the kingdom of God, you love and you serve God's people. You minister to them. You encourage them. You build them up. You, you, you counsel them. How many know what I'm talking about? That is the essence of the kingdom of God. We want to build the kingdom of God. We are in the most strategic church in victory outreach. We got to rise up because God has a plan for our life. God has a purpose for our life. God wants to use you. God wants to build you. God wants to disciple you. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. Hallelujah. What is the definition of a servant? A person who performs duties for others. A devoted and helpful follower. Now watch this. This is good. A devoted devoted and helpful, helpful follower and supporter. Servants they're not looking for titles. How many know if everyone in our church was to rise up and say, you know what, Pastor, we hear the call of God in your life. We see that God wants to use you around the world. We see that God wants to use Sister Georgina around the world. We're going to rise up and become the servants to build the base church so we can launch churches out all around the world. You know why 
I can talk like this, God has given my wife and I the privilege to travel the world. We have traveled the world. We understand when we hear Pastor Al preaching about the vision of the world, we're like, yes, I know. I was just there four weeks ago. On the other side of the world, yes, I know. Many years ago, my wife and I had the privilege to go to Sierra Leone where we passed it in Miami. And we had the privilege to preach at this one church. A pastor friend of mine invited us. There was thousands of people there. And we were blown away. Two things happened that blew us away. When the offering time came, the baskets were this high. They were lined up. And I'm like, this looks like a book of Acts church. Poor people. Poor. They were running up to the basket. The worship, they were dancing all over the place and they were running. And then the service came and I preached and we made an altar call. And there was at least 2,000 people at that altar. And we preached. I was just laying hands on people like normal, going about laying hands on people. At the end of the service, we went into the green room and this lady came in and told the pastor that she wanted to talk to me. I'm like, okay. We had laid hands on her son. This is the type of faith that these people have in Africa. Laid hands on her son. She, said, she started to cry. She said, when you laid hands on my son and you kept moving, my son started to scream. I said, why? Because she said he could never hear before, but he got his, he got his hearing. And there was all this loud noise. And he was nervous. And he was screaming. That's what... That's why when Pastor preaches about the world, when he preaches about the vision, when Pastor Sonny preaches about the vision, I know what they're talking about because we've been there. We've been to, we had guns pulled out of me and my wife in Africa trying to minister to kids that are drug addicts, AK 47s, gang members. So when we hear that, when we hear the vision, what do we want to be? A person who performs duties for others, a devoted and helpful follower and a supporter. You know, it's a pleasure reaching out to people, ministering to people. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm going to move on. When you serve, you position yourself to find your purpose. King David, he was a shepherd boy. David served as a shepherd boy, and he learned how to fight. And in serving, he came into the crossroads with his destiny. What did he do? He was in the backwoods serving. Brother, can you clean the toilet? No problem. He was doing everything he needed to do to serve his father. And then his father came and told him, listen, your brothers are in battle. I want you to take food to them. Because he was serving how many of you know what I'm talking about? God opened up a door for him. He took food to his brothers. Lo and behold, he didn't really understand. And then his brothers had the audacity to tell him, what are you doing here? Like, who are you? And David heard Goliath come against the armies of Israel. And the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost rose upon him. And he began to take his rightful authority. He, he, he came into his destiny. He came into a position where he looked at Goliath and said, who are you to come against the armies of Israel? And with that little sling, God used a little sling. And he, he, he turned that thing, turned that thing, and he hit that, that giant, and the giant died. And everybody was amazed. Because he served, he came into his position. With his purpose. Secondly, we're going to talk about pain. This is the favorite subject. How many know childbirth after that baby's born? Real beautiful. How many know that mother has to go through pain? And everything in life, we have to go through pain. We have to go through a process. Some people don't like the word pain. You know, it's painful, but it's a process. Some people say process. Say process. process. We go through a process. I'm sure Pastor Algie knows about this. No pain, no gain. 
That's the Christian. Because they work out. How many know what I'm talking about? Pain. Go to James chapter 1, verse 2. I'm going to move quick. My wife told me, you better watch the clock. <laughs> she told me, you better watch the clock. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 2. James, the Bible says, my brother, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's how God wants you to be, for the promise he has come in. God wants you to be in a place where you let the trials and tribulations mold you and shape. We all go through trials and tribulations. It was a step of faith coming to San Diego. And then when we got here, the devil had a welcome party. How many know what I'm talking about? Welcome party. And then my father passed and my wife's father passed and everything was happening. But we stood firm. I remember texting pastor, the next scripture I'm about to share with you. Endure hardship like a good soldier. You know, the Bible says, consider, the, the, another version says, consider it pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of many kind. I'm like, are you serious, God? Like, my kids are going crazy. Yippee, 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 yippee. I have no money in the bank. Yes. My wife is tripping out. No problem. My husband's tripping out. No problem. Consider, what, what do you mean consider this? Pure joy. But the Bible, the Bible talks about joy. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit. It's an internal thing. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy unspeakable. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Happiness happens from outside with what happens. I get a raise, your boss is the best person in the world. You get fired, you know what? <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? But God wants us to go through these trials because he has a plan. He has a plan. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you tonight because we love you very much. You know, I'm also going to speak to my brothers that we came out of the pioneering generation many years ago. You know, I've had my shares of trials and tribulations. I've had to endure. But one thing I did, I kept my eyes on the price. Regardless of the situation, I said, you know what, God, I refuse to believe that you, 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 my calling is not going to be fulfilled. I want to encourage you tonight. God has a plan for you. God loves you. God wants to use you. We are in the midst of a tremendous revival where God's going to take this church from glory to glory. Eyes have not seen. Martin Luther King said, I see the vision. I see the mountaintop. How many know I see the mountaintop? You know, when you see me sometimes, I'm so excited because I'm excited because God's not done with me yet. I have to, the Bible says, King David says, encourage yourself in the Lord. My brothers from the pioneer generation, I love you with all my heart. God has something for you in San Diego. God wants to raise you up. We cannot afford not one person rising up. Every single person, son, daughter, baby, mama. Man, woman, husband, wife, we all got to rise up. Young people, where's the gang tonight? <laughs> they keep me energized. Why? Because we have a plan. We see it clearly. We pray for pastor. Every time they go to Mexico, South America, anywhere in the world, Ohio. I, I looked at 
I was on Facebook today. Uh, I think it's Plymouth County in Massachusetts. Just in the past four weeks, they had like 17 overdoses and half of them died of fentanyl. Same thing happening in Ohio. It's happening in Massachusetts. The law enforcement there says, we don't know what to do. The news says maybe the law enforcement can deal with that problem. But how many know we know they can't? That's why the, the, the template starts. Hear me now, real careful. The pioneering template starts in Dayton. God is going to build a pioneering template. God's going to provide for buildings to be bought, monies to come in, millions of dollars to come in. Then we're going to start there. And it's going to spread like wildfire. Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C., Georgia, Florida. How many of you know what we're talking about? God has called you. God has called you. God has called some of you to be pastors. God has called some of you to be pastors' wives. God has called some of you to be evangelists. God has called some of you to be teachers, builders, pillars in the house of God. You have a calling on your life. You know, when we were growing up, people always, brother, you're going to be a pastor. Amen. <laughs> brother, God's going to use you. Amen. When I came in the home, they gave me a thumbtack to put in the world. Where do you want to, the cloud had not even cleared up yet. My home dragged, just put, where you want to go in the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lastly, Promise. Promise. How many of you have a promise? Guess what? Your promise, your promise, God will never keep it away from you. We have purpose, pain, and promise. Your promise is inside of your purpose. You want me to show you an example? My wife. That's a promise. It's inside of my purpose. Promise. Let's go to Isaiah 45. Two and three, we all know this. This is the vision that God gave to Pastor Sonny. This is what he told Pastor Sonny. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze. I will cut the bars of iron. I will give you treasures out of darkness. Yes. And hidden riches in secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, I'm the God of Israel. Every one of you in here tonight is the fulfillment of that promise. God raised up treasures out of darkness. Every one of you is the fulfillment of that promise. How many of you know what I'm talking about? God has a plan for you. You know, I really, really appreciate this church. I really appreciate Pastor Al, Sister Georgina. I've been around the outreach. And I'm not saying that to brag. No, not at all. To be here is a privilege and an honor. <laughs> to be amongst you. To learn from you. To receive from you. My, for my wife and I, it's a privilege and an honor. Isaiah 54, 2, 3. Enlarge the place of your tent. And I'm going to stop there for a minute. That's exactly what we're doing. See that wall? How many of you talk? Come on, give the Lord a praise off. Stretch, stretch your tent curtains wide. That's exactly why God is allowing us to go through what we go through. He's stretching us because the more you stretch that rubber band, the more the rubber band can accommodate. How many of you know what I'm talking about? God wants to pour inside of you a double portion of the Holy Ghost. He's anointing the blood of Jesus, the blood wash, uh, the blood wash anointing of Jesus Christ. We talk about the anointing. We talk about administering the anointing oil. 
The anointing oil is like when you rub somebody down with oil, it's soothing. The anointing oil heals. The anointing oil delivers. The anointing oil provides. Amen. Amen. When you pray, you ask God for the anointing. You ask God to help you. And when you ask God to help you, you position yourself. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stake. And you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit nations and make Desolate cities inhabited. I literally, that scripture, I literally understand what it means to inherit nations. When you travel around the world, every person, it is, does everybody have a passport? Everybody, because at any time, God's going to raise you up and send. Things are going to start happening very fast. How many know what I'm talking about? At any time, there are many nations in the world. Just this last trip that I made to Africa, I was able to go to Sierra Leone, Guinea, uh, Senegal, three. And I've been to other African nations in the past, and European nations as well. And you see people struggling. You see people begging. You see people out there. You pray for them on the streets. That's the call God has given us. That's the promise. But your promise is inside of your purpose. When you allow God to deal with you, you allow God to mold and shape you and build you. You allow God to position you in a place of servanthood where you begin to understand that you come in the crossroads of your destiny. How many know what I'm talking about? As the musicians come, my wife. She said, when I scratch my head, it's time. <laughs> she said, when we go home, I, went, I told you, you know. You, you, you. I scratched my head. I had to like. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you know what, church? We loved you with all our heart. You're going to make me do what I didn't want to do. When we look at you, we look at so scattered. We told God, God, whatever you will for our lives, Lord, let it be done. You know, when we came to San Diego, of course, you know, everybody has plans and everything else. I told Pastor, I said, Pastor, you know what? Put the cross in your face. Me and my wife prayed on him. I said, Yes, Lord. Thank you. 